Hello, my name is Mary. Right now, I'm working with my husband Samuel at his family's business called The Enterprise. It's a small, cozy company run by Samuel's dad, Liam. There are about six of us working there. Liam isn't very involved in day-to-day -day activities. Samuel takes the lead and might become the next boss. He works closely with clients and pushes new projects to help the company grow. When we have big projects, everyone pitches in, making the atmosphere energetic and passionate. I've been part of this lively place for eight years now since I married into the family. But Samuel's mom, Amanda, seems unsure about my role here. Recently, when I got home early to cook dinner and Samuel stayed late at the office, Amanda confronted me with some tough words. She asked me, how long do you plan to stick around in our family's business? Her tone sounded critical and disapproving. Since Amanda retired, she started criticizing my decisions instead of enjoying her free time. I tried to stay calm and asked her, what do you mean by clinging? She replied sharply, suggesting I married Samuel out of necessity, and now took advantage of working at their company. This wasn't the first time she accused me like this, it was happening more often. When I got married, I chose to leave my old job and join Samuel's family business. It was my decision not because I had no other options as Amanda seemed to think. Trying to explain, I told her, Mom, I could work somewhere else if I wanted. I chose to be here. But she brushed it off, convinced she understood my motives. The tension with my mother-in-law went beyond words. Despite promising to take over household duties after retiring, she rarely helped, leaving Liam to often ask for her assistance with chores. Instead, she insisted, I've worked my whole life. Now it's the daughter-in-law's turn to handle things at home. So I often ended up managing dinner and cleaning up afterward. One afternoon, I gathered my courage to address a household issue that was bothering me. Amanda, I started cautiously, at notice dishes often pile up in the sink. It would be helpful if you could clean up after your meals. Instead of understanding, she reacted strongly. She accused me of crossing boundaries and questioned my right as her daughter-in-law to set rules in her home. Feeling drained by our argument, I knew time was slipping away. If I didn't start dinner soon, we'd eat very late. Despite my frustration, I stayed calm. Mom, let's talk more later, I suggested, hoping to ease the tension for now and focus on cooking. Amanda seemed to calm down and left for the living room, leaving me alone with the noise of kitchen utensils. Liam and Samuel had seen Amanda treat me this way before. They tried to step in when they could, but it didn't seem to change much. When they addressed the issue, they looked concerned and frustrated, wanting our family to get along better. Ironically, whenever Liam and Samuel confronted Amanda about her behavior, it often made her angrier at me, making her hostility worse. Her usual calm and gentle manner would turn into contempt, and her words hurt deeply, even though she never physically harmed me. Liam and Samuel's support became my sanctuary, helping me endure Amanda's hurtful comments. One tough morning, after I cleaned up from breakfast and was getting ready for work, Amanda suddenly exclaimed, Oh dear, what a mess. It looks like a garbage dump here. Out of nowhere, she poured a bucket of water on my handbag. I stood there in shock, feeling a mix of disbelief and anger. Why would you do that, Amanda? I managed to ask, my voice shaking. Amanda's reply was dismissive, almost playful, like a mischievous child. Oh, was that your stuff? I thought it was just a big piece of trash. Her casual attitude made me even more furious, even if you thought it was trash, who pours water on something? I argued, struggling to grasp her lack of consideration. In the morning light, sitting across from Amanda in our living room, her expression was cold and determined, as if she had decided on a drastic action. What on earth are you thinking? Now the carpet's soaked, and what about my things? I blurted out, feeling a mix of confusion and frustration as I hurriedly took out the wet items from my bag. Important work documents lay spread out on the table, drying off. Amanda looked at me with a chilling calmness, showing no remorse or concern for the chaos she had caused. You don't need to go to work anymore, she said flatly. I was completely stunned by her statement. Excuse me? I replied, filled with disbelief and shock. Amanda's next words hit me hard. You've been hanging around this house for eight years, but today I can finally get rid of you. Her voice dripped with venom and determination. A side of her I'd never seen before. My mind raced with sadness. Get rid of me, I repeated, my voice betraying my disbelief. She made me feel like an outsider in my own family. My daughter is joining the company, so we need you to leave. Today's your last day. All you have to do is apologize to your father-in-law and Samuel for causing trouble, she laughed mockingly, adding insult to injury. She was using my job to push me out. I had invested years into that job, earning respect and making cherished memories. Shocked and heartbroken, I struggled to understand the harshness of her decision. I had devoted myself to this family, yet it seemed my efforts meant nothing to her. Are you sure about this? Wasn't Emma working at a clothing store in Philadelphia? 
I asked, my voice showing my confusion and concern. My job meant more to me than just a paycheck. It was my path to personal fulfillment. Meanwhile, Emma, my sister-in-law, tired of city life and its impersonal nature, decided to come back. She said she was fed up with the cold people in Philadelphia, so I told her I had a job waiting for her once she returned home. Amanda explained firmly, leaving little room for discussion. Amanda's words hit me hard. She's agreed to come back immediately, and now that she has, I want you out of this house. Her statement was shocking, almost impossible to accept. With one decision she was ready to completely append my life, disregarding my place in the family without any chance for dialogue. Coldly, she handed me an envelope. I've written your resignation letter, she announced, effectively casting me out of our home. In that moment, my heart broke. Years of dedication and closeness were brushed aside like they meant nothing. Her actions ripped apart the bonds that held our family together, leaving them irreparably damaged. With a heavy heart, I walked the short five minutes to the company, a route I knew well but today it felt heavy with emotions. Each step under the cool morning sky carried the weight of the situation unfolding. When I entered the office I shared with Liam, my father-in-law, and Samuel, my husband, I told them about Amanda's harsh ultimatum. They looked shocked and held back their anger, staying composed despite the turmoil. They cautiously suggested it might be best for me to step back for a while to show Amanda the impact of her demands. This suggestion threw my heart into even more confusion. After years of working hard at our family business, the idea of taking a break longer than the usual holidays like Thanksgiving or Christmas seemed strange and overwhelming. Encouraged by Samuel and Liam's supportive words, why not take a step forward and try something new? I decided to take a short trip. As I packed, my mind raced with thoughts about my life, the decisions I had made, and what lay ahead in the future. Meanwhile, my sister-in-law Emma, who was supposed to take over my role at the company, arrived shockingly late at 2 p.m. Her casual attitude left Samuel and Liam bewildered and frustrated. Despite their attempts to help her understand the business, Emma showed little interest in learning its intricacies. Upon hearing this news, anxiety gripped me about the future of the company. Even as I looked forward to my journey and hoped to avoid another encounter with Amanda, I quickly set off. Watching the landscape change from the train window, I took the opportunity to reflect on my past and present. The journey provided not just physical distance but a chance to breathe and think about what lay ahead for me. As I enjoyed local seafood specialties during my travels, my thoughts frequently turned to my family and our business. I was deep in these reflections on the fifth day of my retreat when my peace was suddenly shattered by a tearful call from Emma. What's happening? Mom said it was an easy job, just sitting in a chair, but Samuel and Dad act like I can't do anything right. Emma lamented, clearly frustrated. Her words sounded like they echoed the assurances my mother-in-law had given her, which caught me off guard. Despite the relaxed pace of my days away, I knew it was time to face the reality of the situation. So Emma, how comfortable are you with computers? I asked, sensing her hesitation. Well, I mostly watch videos and play games online, she replied, hinting at her limited technical skills. Curious about her abilities, I asked about her experience with software like Word or Excel. Her confused response surprised me, given her background in the apparel industry in Philadelphia, where tasks like tracking sales and managing inventory would typically require basic computer knowledge. Can you handle sales calculations or fill up documents? I questioned further. She confidently said she could manage those tasks, but when I asked, can you calculate the correct amount of tax? Her confidence wavered, and she answered uncertainly. This wasn't just about testing Emma's math skills, but about seeing if she could apply them practically in a business context. While Emma had talents in other areas, it was evident she lacked confidence in the specific skills needed for the job. Her discomfort with calculations seemed to be a significant factor in the criticism from Liam and Samuel. It was essential for me to address the motives behind my mother-in-law's efforts to replace me. Since you're taking over my role, I expect you to handle accounting tasks proficiently. Pay attention to email etiquette. A casual tone suitable for friends isn't appropriate for business. You'll also need to manage staff scheduling. Our team is small, but we prioritize everyone's time off requests, so don't put your convenience over theirs, I told her firmly. As I continued outlining her responsibilities, I could hear Emma crying on the other end of the line. It was a difficult conversation, but necessary for her to understand the reality and expectations of the role she was taking on. But I thought I wouldn't have much to do. Emma abruptly ended the call, clearly overwhelmed by the tasks ahead. I took the chance to explore Philadelphia, the city Emma had left behind. Surprisingly, I found the people there warmer than I expected, a stark contrast to the cold behavior of my mother-in-law Amanda and Emma, who seemed determined to push me away. A week after leaving my job, I returned to my in-law's house. As soon as I arrived, Amanda confronted me, her face red with anger. How dare you make my daughter cry? You won't get away with this. 
she yelled, her eyes filled with fury and confusion. Before she could reach me, Samuel and Liam stepped in to calm her down. Despite their efforts, Amanda's anger didn't subside. Emma's upset because she got in trouble for trying to boss around her employees without knowing how. Samuel explained calmly but firmly, trying to clear up the misunderstanding. Mary hasn't been here for a week, so she couldn't have upset Emma. Emotionally, Amanda shot back, it's all because of her. Mary is the reason for Emma's problems. She accused me without any evidence. Where is Emma, anyway? I asked, looking around, but she wasn't there, adding to the confusion. It's strange. Emma doesn't have anywhere else to go since she gave up her apartment in Philadelphia. I thought she'd be here, I mused aloud. Samuel then explained. Emma's locked herself in her room. She's been crying and doesn't want to go to work anymore. She's overwhelmed, mainly because she doesn't have the skills needed for the job. Amanda, still angry, accused me. You've turned Samuel and Liam against me. They wouldn't say the company runs better with you instead of Emma unless you poisoned them against her. Samuel sighed deeply, clearly exhausted from the ongoing family conflict and his efforts to clear up misunderstandings. Mom, he tried to explain again, it might seem surprising, but Mary is exceptional at her job. She's certified in bookkeeping, her administrative skills are top-notch, and she's even fluent in Spanish from studying abroad. She handles all our multilingual communications of the company, he said proudly. Amanda looked surprised, evidently unaware of my qualifications and contributions. That sounds like something from a TV show, she muttered, reflecting on the situation. I remember in college I was so focused on getting certifications and studying that I had little time for socializing or dating. That's when I met Samuel when he visited my company for business, I shared, trying to bridge the gap between misunderstandings and the reality of our lives. Realizing Amanda wasn't interested in my qualifications or past achievements, I refocused the conversation on the present situation. To sum up, I handle a wide range of tasks at the company, from accounting and scheduling to coordinating with other companies and managing employee shifts, I explained, detailing the breadth of my responsibilities. Samuel chimed in, the work environment has improved significantly since you took a step back, Mom. His remark visibly surprised Amanda. Just then, Liam, Samuel's father, interjected with a startling revelation. We're considering closing down the company soon. Emma made a serious error. Instead of completing some crucial documents, she opted to take phone calls because she thought it would be more enjoyable while we were away. She ended up being rude to an important contact from another company, which could have serious consequences. I was shocked, my hand covering my mouth in disbelief. I can't believe Emma would do something like that, I murmured, filled with a sense of disbelief and dread over the potential implications for the company's future. As I pondered over these anxious thoughts, the story took another unexpected twist. When I explained our situation, the president of the other company suggested it might be time to consider merging. He expressed interest in absorbing our family business. Liam continued, revealing the surprising turn of events. This unexpected development brought a glimmer of hope. A merger could stabilize our customer base, a goal Samuel had been tirelessly working towards through his efforts in sales. Samuel and Liam felt relieved by the news, but Amanda had a different reaction. She immediately objected, that's not acceptable. Samuel should be the president. This company belongs to us, doesn't it? He shouldn't just become an employee. Amanda exclaimed passionately, unwilling to entertain the idea of losing the status and control that came with owning the company. Her outburst drew Emma downstairs to see what was happening. Amid the chaos, Liam's calm but firm voice cut through the tension. I am divorcing you. You have resisted change, neglected your duties at home and to the family, and I've learned about your involvement with younger men. I can no longer tolerate this behavior, he declared, shocking everyone present, including Samuel and me. Liam then placed divorce papers and a photo of Amanda with a young man on the table. If you sign these papers now and take your belongings, I won't pursue alimony. Trying to get money from you would be futile, he stated firmly. How can you say that? Haven't I dedicated myself to this household all these years? Amanda protested. Liam countered, have you actually done any real housework in the last eight years? Spending someone else's money on younger men doesn't count as dedication to this house, his frustration evident in his voice. It was an unprecedented display of firmness from Liam, typically known for his gentle demeanor, as he addressed long-standing family issues. The atmosphere was charged with tension and disbelief as Liam, usually composed and reserved, showed a side of himself that shocked everyone present, especially Emma, who had just entered the room. Her slight trembling betrayed her astonishment and fear at the unfolding scene. Emma, this concerns you too, Liam declared firmly. You returned because you couldn't make it on your own in Philadelphia. Now you're struggling to find a job here, yet you act as if you're above everyone else. You've stopped making an effort altogether, resorting to escapism. It's time for you to leave this house as well. 
Emma was stunned, her face showing a mix of confusion and denial. Wait, Dad, maybe Mom has her issues but I'm still your daughter, right? She protested desperately, trying to maintain her place in the family. Amanda, hurt by her daughter's words, reacted with shock. Are you turning against me now, Emma? She accused, her voice filled with hurt and disbelief as tensions escalated. Liam intervened swiftly to prevent further conflict. To avoid more trouble, I've arranged for both of you to stay with an acquaintance until you get back on your feet. They'll be here shortly to pick you up. Please gather your essential belongings, he instructed firmly, his tone brooking no argument. With heavy hearts and no other options, Amanda and Emma packed their belongings. Shortly after, an acquaintance of Liam's, who managed a factory with living arrangements, arrived to take them to their new temporary home. Meanwhile, Samuel, Liam, and I seized the opportunity to inform our employees about the upcoming merger of our company with a larger corporation, preparing them for the changes and challenges ahead. Amidst these significant life changes, I discovered that I was pregnant. I shared the joyful news with the president of the acquiring company, who responded with enthusiasm. He assured me they would find a suitable replacement for my role to ensure a smooth transition. With the promise of new beginnings and the excitement of our growing family, Samuel and Liam redoubled their dedication to the company, inspired by the bright future ahead.